Cider Blossom Orchard. It is Sunday afternoon today. It is hot. It is uh, about 93 degrees right now. It's pretty steamy out here doing a little sweating. A uh, little bit of workout in the orchard this weekend. But I had a topic I've, I've really been wanting to talk about here for some time. And that is one of disease resistant apple trees. And uh, let's do that today. Apple trees. What are they? Well, I've got a few of them growing in my orchard. A couple of my favorite apples are actually considered disease resistant trees. Uh, that would be Crimson Crisp and Gold Rush for me. But what is a disease resistant tree? Often we see them in the fruit tree catalogs and they've got their own little section. And in there you're going to see Liberty, Freedom, Gold Rush, uh, Jana Free is sometimes listed in there. Enterprise will be in there. What are they? Primarily a disease resistant apple tree <clears throat> has a, 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 a field immunity to apple scab. Apple scab is a disease that begins in the early, early spring when you have wet weather and it's cool out. Uh, that apple scab comes up off the orchard floor and begins to infect the trees. And this will linger on in through the summer depending on your weather conditions and depending on the amount of scab inoculum that you have in the orchard. It's difficult to control. It requires a lot of inputs to control. So this is the one that the breeders went after, the apple scab. And having these disease resistant trees, these field immune trees, resistance and immunity are two different things. So immunity means you will not get apple scab on these trees. Resistance sometimes tends to mean it's resistant, but it's not completely immune. So you might get a touch of it, but it won't be too bad. That's the difference between these two. But all disease resistant trees that I've seen are immune to apple scab. So that's what you're getting with a disease resistant tree. Disease resistant tree like the Liberty apple. The Liberty apple probably has the best pedigree for disease resistance. It's immune to apple scab, a cedar apple rust, powdery mildew, highly resistant to fire blight. So that's where the Liberty apple tree is. Now let's take the Gold Rush apple tree, which is a disease resistant tree. Um, resistant to powdery mildew, fire blight highly susceptible to cedar apple rust. If you do not treat cedar apple rust on your disease resistant gold rush tree and you have inoculum in the area, which most of us do, you will have a tree covered in cedar apple rust. So not every disease resistant tree is created the same. And hence is the problem. And we start to run into as fruit growers some issues in how we treat these different trees. This will make life easier for you as a backyard fruit grower if you get the right ones for your area. That's true. But it doesn't necessarily mean you have to invest less time into working with the tree in the summertime. And let's face it, this is work in the summertime until we get to that final end product in the fall. You still have to provide inputs into the tree. That I ran into with disease resistant trees and something you might be considering if uh, you want to try Liberty and let's say you want to try Crimson Crisp and you want to try Gold Rush, but you love Fuji and you love Honeycrisp. So you're going to plant those five trees together in the backyard and you're going to space them out in a line. Now consider this. When you go to spray those trees, well, if you've watched some of my videos, you're gonna know that your Fuji tree and that your Honeycrisp tree are gonna require far more inputs than the Gold Rush, the Crimson Crisp, and the Liberty. But if you're out there with your sprayer 
and you've got your tank mix for those two highly susceptible trees a Fuji and a Honeycrisp, what are you going to do? What did I do? I sprayed the other trees with the mix that I had in the tank. They got it anyway. Field immune or not, they got it anyway. Or it's going to require you to go back and add the chemical you need to add and then treat the other two trees that require that extra chemical, such as caftan in the case of treating apple scab. Ask yourself seriously, will you do that? If you have five trees in the backyard, it's very doable. If you have 50 trees in the side yard or in the side lot, maybe not so much because you're gonna be, let's face it, we're all busy, okay? You're gonna be out there after work trying to treat your trees. You may have a half an hour today that you can get this done. It just rained, it's gonna rain. You've gotta get it on. Are you gonna go back and add the extra chemical for the additional trees? Found that I wouldn't do it. But I made another mistake with my disease resistant trees. My high density uh, plantings, I put those disease resistant trees up next to my highly susceptible trees. So I had a gold rush and a gold rush and a Jonathan and a Jonathan and a Crimson Crisp, and a Honey Crisp, and on down the line. So I had them all mixed. And with trees being three feet apart, it made absolutely no sense to spray this tree with uh, a chemical that uh, I needed for scab control and keep it off the tree that was right beside it, and then come back and treat that tree differently, or vice versa just doesn't work that way in the real world. Something you definitely want to consider. I'm not discouraging you from using disease resistant apple trees. I think it's a great uh, foot forward in your apple program. But consider, are you gonna take the time to actually gain the benefit that these disease resistant trees allow us to get with scab control? In my case, I didn't. You're going all disease resistant. You want all the advantage you can get as a backyard grower. You plant Liberty, you plant three Liberties, and you plant three Crimson Crisp. Great apple trees. You're going to have problems with the Crimson Crisp because the Crimson Crisp is susceptible to cedar apple rust. Not to the degree that Gold Rush is, but it is susceptible to cedar apple rust. I'm just sweating profusely sitting out here <laughs> talking to you. It is a warm day today. So you've got to consider, all right, I'm going to make this, uh, this tank spray, this mix. I got my, my gallon sprayer, my two gallon, my backpack, whatever it is. And I'm going to go through and hit these trees without the treatment for cedar apple rust, and then I'm gonna go add that and put it on these trees. You can do that fine with six trees in the backyard. If you have a larger orchard, it's a little more cumbersome. But if you've got those six trees or you're planting those six trees in the backyard, ask yourself seriously, am I going to do that? Insects will come to any apple tree. They care not whether your tree is disease resistant. If you do not treat for insects, you will get what I call, what a friend of mine actually calls, uh, the Mr. Magoo apple. For those of you that have been around as long as I have, you remember what Mr. Who Mr. Magoo was. And Mr. Magoo had this old wrinkled up face, all right? And you may have seen this on some of the old apple trees that were growing on Grandma and Grandpa's back 40 they didn't pay any attention to. Perhaps it's been in your yard, okay? And that Mr. Magoo apple is just covered in insect damage. And as you go through the summer, the apple doesn't grow. It just gets worse and it gets all dimply and nasty. This is what happens when we don't treat for insects. You need to still spray your apple trees. You need to control insects some way, somehow. Um, this is just a fact of life. Different areas of the country require different amounts of input. 
but all apple trees will end up with a Mr. Magoo apple if they're not treated for insect. There's, there's no immunity to insects. There's no resistance to insects when it comes to apples. I will offer, however, that some of the insects I've seen here in my orchard do tend to favor different varieties of apple trees. Uh, I will say that Plum Curculio loves my Liberty apple tree and he likes my Gold Rush apple tree, but there's other trees that, uh, such as the Fuji, that that insect really doesn't affect a whole lot, doesn't affect to that degree. So just something to consider there. Um, captan is the fungicide of choice to treat a lot of your, well, your apple scab primarily. So if you've got disease resistant trees, you're not spraying captan. Well, captan has other uses for our apple trees in the summertime. It's not just the apple scab control. There are summer fruit rots to consider. And those of us that live in a really humid area, as you can see the humidity running off of my face and probably collecting on my shirt right now, we live in a humid area and that captan helps to control summer fruit rots. And if you're not spraying for scab control with captan, guess what? You're not treating summer fruit rot and come August you're going to suffer some of the consequences of that. So again as a backyard grower you can have it your way. You can you can offer up 50% of your fruit to feed the critters. If you want more than that you might want to consider a caftan spray or several in the summertime simply for fruit rot control plant some disease resistant apple trees and I encourage you to plant some disease resistant trees. One thing to consider is plant like trees together. So trees like Liberty that are really immune to just about everything. Plant those in a row. So when you've got that mix in your sprayer, you're going to go through and you're going to hit all those trees. What you don't want to do is plant one of those trees here, one of those trees on the other side of the house, one of those trees on the back 40, and then have to go around with your sprayer and treat all those with one mix and then have to cover all those steps again with a different tank mix to treat your different trees. Make, it, make life easy and do a little bit of planning, unlike myself. Do a little bit of planning ahead and say, okay, I'm gonna hit these trees with this spray, then I'll go back and add this, and then go to this area and I can hit all of these. Tip number one. Uh, number two, disease resistant trees are great for wildlife. If you're wanting to plant trees for Deer, uh, disease resistant trees are the way to go. It does not eliminate insect damage, but if you wanted to go through and treat your, your, your wildlife trees with an insect spray a few times a summer, and if they, like tree like Liberty, that really has no disease issues, you hit it with a few sprays, a couple sprays in the summertime for insects, and you are good to go for a wildlife tree right there. So they're excellent for that. Another thing, if you want minimal spraying, so yeah, I'm willing to treat my trees, but I don't want to be out there every 10 days spraying my apple trees. I'm willing to accept some damage to my apples. Well, then a disease resistant tree is right up your alley. Plan ahead. Because if you don't, I just, I, I know how I am. And if I don't make it easy, I'm going to hit all those trees with the same spray mix and it does not matter what they're resistant to or not. So ask yourself, are you willing to do that in your backyard? If you mix one tree with the next with the next, are you gonna go through and redo that chemical for each individual tree? Or are you gonna make it easy on yourself? Are you gonna plan ahead and put those trees in one spot? And then if you've got a different planting in another area, you're gonna put different trees there. So you don't have to run circles every time you go and treat your trees. It's summertime, the sun's on my back now. The apples are growing, the trees are growing. And I hope apples are growing where you're at in your backyard. It's July. We've got a harvest coming here in about seven weeks with Gail.